never ending and my butt cheeks are on fire I just spotted a tunnel through the mountains which must mean I'm uh, I'm at the top <laughs> it's quite windy up here this all feels like a really horrible spinning team spinning class and I'm the dickhead Shouting just, just a little more. You can do it. Almost there. Shut up! I don't want to be almost there. I want to be finished. This fucking mountain. Hey. downhill from here <laughs> I just cycled 15 kilometers at least uphill so this is going to be awesome. some military guy told me that I wasn't allowed to take photos and I thought it would, he just meant in the tunnel so I did that anyway when I came out on the other side I, um, I wanted to take a picture of the mountain and as soon as I had done that, some <laughs> new military guy um, stopped in his car and said, you're not allowed to take photos of the mountains. I think I'm pretty lucky you didn't see exactly what I was taking photos of. top of a mountain that was covered in snow I was told that I had to probably had to take a train through the mountains because they would be closed uh, due to snow <laughs> but I made it through anyway that was the last obstacle um, for me to go through there's nothing, there's nothing now. Nothing to stop me from making it all the way to Kyrgyzstan. I've got four days to cycle 200 kilometers. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Holy shit, man. Ah, oh, this is so stupid. <laughs> So awesome. 
so fucking awesome. This has been the absolute most ridiculous ride through Uzbekistan. I'm never cycling that far again in winter. Never ever. But I guess adventures have, have to be stupid. Or else it's not really an adventure. Look at this. thing I thought about when I got to the hotel was Frank yeah I've got a spa uh, next thing was oh no there's no hot water uh, third thing was oh shit where did the power go the last four hotels I've stayed in uh, the last month have had several power failures every day uh, so I guess that's just how the way things are down here, over here, wherever. So this is the end of Uzbekistan, the end of the, the boring, insanely long days of just non-stop riding the bike. The next couple of weeks I'll be focused on figuring out how I get to India. I think both me and the bike need some maintenance, especially the bike. It feels like the brakes are on all the time. But it's not far now, so. Three weeks bicycle vacation, just 20 kilometers down the road. Border's just up ahead. Uh, every hotel I've been in have asked me where have I stayed the last week I say in a tent uh, they say you will have problems at the border then uh, my visa guy Sergei says it'll be no problem uh, it's not illegal so let's see who's right so here we go So, guess what? I'm not in Uzbekistan. The border is just over there. All the trucks are in line to get through. I've been sleeping in here, in a little shed next to a hotel. Uh, the border was closed <laughs> when I got there. Um, at first I, uh, I refused to leave until I had uh, like four different people working at the border tell me it's okay, we'll, uh, it'll be no problem. No thanks. It took them about five minutes of phone calls back and forth between some big boss and then they let me through. It didn't matter about the expired visa. They were like, ah, oh, it's okay, go. That's how it's supposed to be. So six months ago, I left Copenhagen and now I'm in Osh, Osh, in Kyrgyzstan. All, uh, all day, all night, all morning, I could hear this mosque 
just taunting me. Haha, <laughs> you didn't make it through. But 